Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Xbox On and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the hardest rare achievements that you can unlock on Xbox. Now if you're wondering what a rare achievement is, it's where under 10% of that gaming community has unlocked it. So only a small amount of you guys have got it. Plus when you unlock it, you get a really cool little special achievement pop. So here are 10 of the hardest achievements still up for grabs. It's no surprise that a game which includes a whopping 30 games was going to have a long and difficult achievement to get hold of. I mean, why just have achievements that relate to individual games when you could have an achievement which involves all 30 games? Yep, you're gonna need to set some time aside in your schedule for this one. So how it works is this. As you progress through games in Rare Replay, you'll be rewarded with stamps, and those stamps act as an indicator to your overall progression, which adds to your player rank. So to get the Stampers Forever achievement, you'll need to collect three 330 stamps. Yep, every single stamp from every single game. It will literally require hundreds of hours of gameplay and then you know you're going to get to that bit where you only have a few left but they're so ridiculously hard to get that you'll wonder why you spent 18 days collecting 317 of them. It's no surprise that not many gamers have managed to unlock this one. Do you have the endurance it takes to get that achievement to pop? Only one way to find out. Now, there are some of us on the team who've yet to complete a single Mega Man game, let alone master all of them. But for this achievement, you need to do exactly that. It's awarded for earning gold medals in 50 of the game's 54 speedrun challenges. These have brutally difficult times to beat, many requiring expert knowledge of glitches and exploits in order to meet them. Those that have the achievements say that the key is to watch the replays of people on top of the leaderboards, but doing that may make you feel terrible about your own dreadful skills. It will require pixel perfect jumps, nimble reflexes and a huge amount of patience. Needless to say, if you can earn this rare achievement, you are definitely in the top 1% of the game's players. The Extreme Survivor achievement from Rise of the Tomb Raider is a classic tough achievement. The good old, complete the entire game on a ridiculously hard setting trick. The setting itself is called Extreme Survivor, and as you can probably tell from its name, it's not the easiest way of adventuring with Lara. <laughs> It's got all the components that you'd expect from a hard difficulty setting. Enemies are tougher, you can only get health back from using healing items which are few and far between, and you can only save at campfires. This leads to plenty of frustrating moments of being really far in a section, only to be taken out by a particularly tough enemy, and then finding yourself way back at a long distant campfire. In terms of making it through, stealth will be your friend. It's best to avoid conflict at all times. Make sure to choose your upgrade strategically, and most importantly, save, save and save again. Providing you're near a campfire, any small accomplishment such as picking up an item or taking down an enemy deserves a quick double back so you can save. Better get your poison arrows ready, you're gonna need them. Well, surprise, surprise, if one of the hardest achievements on Xbox 360 isn't also one of the hardest achievements on Xbox One. Dead Rising 7 Day Survivor is a legendary endurance challenge. You have to survive for 7 days in the game's infinity mode, and as you can't save in infinity mode, that means 14 hours of real-time play with no breaks. That's 14 real-time hours without getting munched on by a zombie. Worse, Frank's health depletes every 1 minute and 40 seconds, so you're forced to venture out into the mall and find food to munch on. Not only is there the challenge of surviving in game, but you have to think of your real world body too. What if you need to go to the toilet? Tough! If you manage to bag this rare achievement, you'd probably be able to survive a real zombie apocalypse. Will you let us into the bunker when the time comes? Yeah, thanks. I don't want to die. Now, if I said one of the hardest achievements in Final Fantasy XV involved taking down a turtle boss, you probably wouldn't see what the big deal was about. I mean, we had to take down giant gods. Surely a little hard-shelled animal can't be too tough. Well, think again, as the boss in question is Adamantois, an absolutely giant beast with an actual mountain on its back. This fearsome foe is level 99 and you're not going to be able to take him down until you finish the game. Once you've got that out of the way, you're going to need some serious meal buffs and the right strategy in mind if you want to get that sweet achievement pop. The really challenging thing about this battle is just how long it takes. There are claims it can take up to 72 hours in real time. Yep, just 
Think of your electricity bill. It has been proven to be completed in a far more respectable hour, but that's still a solid hour of tortoise torture. Get some snacks in, equip your very best weapons, and make sure you've level grinded as much as you can, because trust me when I say, you're going to need all the help you can get with this battle. This is another rare achievement where the difficulty comes from the sheer level of time you need to commit to it. You need to complete 100% of Just Cause 3. That means liberating 130 settlements, collecting every collectible, unlocking every vehicle, and beating 112 challenges to a 5 star level. It's that last bit that will give you the most trouble, as you need to truly master every discipline the game offers. You'll need to pull off perfect wingsuit time trials, be able to drive stupid stupidly fast cars along deadly weaving roads and cause billions of dollars of explosive damage. Working on the crash bomb challenges though is never a chore. Who can argue with the option to blow up buildings again and again? No, it's when you crunch your face into the tarmac for the hundredth time in a wingsuit run that you really feel the burn. Better this and you are a true master of destruction. So if Resident Evil 7 wasn't horrifying enough, how about trying to complete it without using the item box more than three times? Now that's scary. Add to that spooky thought with the fact that the game forces you to use the item box at certain times so you're not free to use those precious three moments whenever you see fit. Now you might think that not using the item box isn't that tough, but it presents a multitude of problems. What if you don't have that all important key on you because you stored it ages ago but you've run out of times to open the box and get it back? What if you run out of ammo and herbs and your only hope of survival lies waiting in one of those item boxes? What if you run out of space in your backpack on your travels and need to pick up an all important an object. To really get this achievement, you need to play through the game first, making a note of what items you need and when, what enemies you can bypass without fighting, and when exactly the crucial times to use the item box is. If being absolutely freaked out by the horrible bakers in the molded wasn't enough, you've now got item management to worry about. Just great. Now, I'm not surprised that Dishonored 2's Flesh and Steel achievement is rare, as it requires you to play the game ignoring all the coolest features. To get this achievement, you need to complete the game without any supernatural powers. You want to climb up to those rooftops? Forget about using Blink or Far Reach, you better try finding a pile of boxes instead. Okay, so combat isn't too much of a problem. Both Emily and Corvo are pretty good with swords and pistols, but there are still huge chunks of the game you'd struggle to reach without the power to teleport into a rat or turn into a shadow. If you want to add extra pain to your flesh and steel run, try doing it at the same time as the rare shadow achievement, which requires you to beat the whole game without getting spotted a single time. Manage to combine those two and you could make a living as a real assassin. You might look at threes and struggle to see the challenge. It's a number puzzle game. Mega Man it ain't. But the Volio achievement requires true mastery. It asks you to combine numbers to create a card with a score of 6,144. If you're not sure of the concept of threes, you basically combine identical numbers to create bigger cards. So stick two 12 cards together and you've got yourself a 24 card. The board fills up quickly though, and it's difficult to get high numbers before all the spaces are filled and it's game over. After two years, of trying, our highest card is 768, made by combining two 384 cards together. The idea of ever getting to one 3072 card, let alone the two of them needed to make 6144, is frankly ridiculous. The handful of people who have done this say it's due to the game randomly spawning a 3072 card in their time of need. Think luck is on your side? Then maybe you'll earn this rarest of achievements. You can't talk about rare achievements without bringing up Gears of War 4 Seriously 4.0. But first, a quick history lesson. Gears of War Seriously achievements have a long, long history of challenging even the best of players. In Gears of War 1, you had to kill 10,000 players in versus matches. In Gears 2, you had to kill 100,000 enemies in any mode. But in Gears 3, you're asked to not only reach level 100, but to earn every Onyx medal while you do it. This was insanely hard. Not to be outdone, but Gears of War 4's seriously achievement sets one of the hardest challenges yet. 
Not only do you have to finish the campaign on Insanity, a brutal challenge in itself, but you have to collect every multiplayer ribbon, beat 50 consecutive waves on every horde map, and level every horde class to level 10. But the real time consuming bit is getting your character to re-up 10 times. That means leveling up to level 100 10 times. The internet offers plenty of clever ways of mining experience from horde mode, but if you wanted to get this the old fashioned way, you'd be playing Gears of War 4 until you're old and grey. Hey, just in time to play Gears of War 16 on the Scorpio 2. Best of luck with that, soldier. Yeah. So there we have it, 10 of the hardest rare achievements on Xbox that are still up for grabs. Let us know in the comments if you've got one. Also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and check out last week's list show whilst you're at it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.